my charming husband, if you were in his talk earlier. Um, he's the one who introduced me to WordPress, so I have a wife, a mom, a grandma. My company is Love Built Life, and it's a creative arts and lifestyle company, and basically, I just tell people, build a life they love. So I do a lot of midlife coaching, which means that I just coach a lot of women over a certain age who are trying to start their lives over and start to do new things. Um, I'm also an artist and a teacher, so I teach part-time for Lenore Ryan University out of North Carolina. I teach DEI for the web. I have been a blogger, and as you can see, I put in quotations blogger since 2005, and I'm gonna tell you why as we talk. Um, but I am a Ford VIP blog blogger for your Southern Ford dealers alongside my husband, who, as you'll see too, is the most prolific blogger I know. So this is 2.0, which means I've done this talk before. Um, there are some things from the talk, but I have updated this. Um, but for those of you who are not gonna go and watch the other one, I did put a lot of the, the meat of it in here. But number one, people wanna know is blogging dead. So we've heard this many times, blogging is dead, it's no good, it's, people don't blog anymore, but it's not true. Um, in 2019, when I did this talk, a Google search for how to blog yielded 135,000 people a month looking for how to start a blog, but overall there were three million results for that particular question. Um, in 2023, when I did it, I found that there were 600 million active blogs on the internet out of 1.9 billion websites. So that's a lot of blogging. And depending on where you are, you could be number one in that country, in that area. Um, so people are still blogging. Actually, during the pandemic, it had a resurgence. People were talking about their time being home, being isolated. It was one of the ways that they were able to connect. So, Quick question before I go further. Anybody here have a blog already? No. Yes. One. You do. You do. A semi blog. Okay. How about social media? Yeah. Okay. So the one thing you did not know when you came in here was that this is a workshop. So hopefully you have pen and paper because I am going to make you work a little bit. And even better because they don't have the cameras because in my other talk they do. So when I stop and let people work, do a little actual work. Um, <laughs> all you see is you know silence. So I said I'll do this again um, so that people can see it. Uh, so what is a blog really? So you know the original. Anyone know what the original why, where blog came from? It was called a web blog. It was called we blog web blog, and then they shortened it to blog, and that's how we got blog. It was an online journal basically where people would just put their stuff online, but it grew. You know, people realize like, oh wow, people want to see what I'm writing. <coughs> so basically, what a blog is, is a conversational way to share your business, or share your business, um, to give a voice to the voiceless, uh, champion the cause, give out information, or just be your authentic self. And we're gonna focus on two things in this talk. One, being your authentic self. So unless one, some of you are doctors, or lawyers and you want to be very technical, most blogs are not technical. So when people say, well, I don't know how to write, and I'm like, well, the best thing about blogs is that you don't have to be a really fantastic writer. People want to just hear from you and want to know who you are. So how do you best express yourself? And we're gonna talk about all the different kinds of blogs and ways you can express yourself. And they want it to be conversational. So um, they have done studies on blogs and they have found that the best blogs and the ones that people go to the most, the average reading level for that blog is eighth grade. So when you go above that, people are not interested. It's too formal, it's too technical. Unless they're going specifically for technical, they're not looking for that. They're looking for something very conversational and easy to read. And for those of them of you like me, short and sweet. So if you like to write a lot, which some people do, break it up so that people can read it and enjoy it. So what else can blogging do? So if you have a company, you can launch your brand, you can start your brand, uh, increase your sphere of influence and authority. So once people know that you have a blog and you've been blogging for a while, it's almost like writing a book. A blog can help you write a book. If you write enough, like some people I know, you can actually take those entries, rewrite them, and put them together in a book, 
there is a woman, her name is Catherine Lang, with an L, Catherine Lang, and she's out of uh, WordCamp Birmingham, and that's, she teaches online um, at WordPress.tv and on, at WordCamps how to take your blog and actually turn it into a book, which she's, she's actually done. So, um, the other thing you can do is open new doors for engagement, expand your reach, provide another venue for marketing, and help you make money. But why are you here? Most of you are here, it's like, I can't write. <laughs> so you don't have to. What do we say? Yay! <laughs> so ways to blog without being a writer. So when I first started my blog, I started with my art blog. I am an artist, and all I would do is take a picture of the art I was doing and post it. No words. I didn't have time, so I was just like, I'll just take a picture and I'll put it out there. And I did that, and I made sure that I did that on a regular basis, and I would just take an image and put it out there. And then I went from there to poetry. So I was like, well, I write poetry, so I would post poetry. Again, no comment, no anything, just putting poetry up there. And I was surprised people would come. I actually started on Blogger, and people would come and make comments. So people would say, oh, you're a blogger? Let me go check it out. And there would be pictures and poetry, and that was it. There was not a whole lot um, on there. I wasn't writing my thoughts until later, because actually I found that I liked it. <laughs> I liked being on there, and I liked people coming in and checking it out. And I was like, well, I have a whole lot to say. Let me start writing that. But you don't have to. You can start with just images, um, recipes. Some people know recipe blogs. Anyone here a foodie? Kind of, sort of. Let me just say, if you are a foodie or you want to do a recipe blog and you, or you know someone who says, hey, I'd like to start a recipe blog, let's start with the recipe, okay? Everybody likes the stories about where those cookies came from and grandma's house and all those wonderful things, but when people are looking for recipes, they want the recipe. Put the story after the recipe, okay? That's just a little tip. Um, an idea blog. So what is an idea blog? Just what you... Again, like what it sounds like. Um, finding ideas that could be yours, or they could be others. They can be someone else's ideas, and you're just kind of putting together a compilation of ideas in one space. Um, infographics. And you can put your ideas behind it. Say, hey, I think this is a great idea. I don't think this is, you know, let's weigh in, let's put a poll, whatever. Um, infographics, uh, those are those images that you see sometimes where it's like, you know, how many people do X, Y, Z, and they put it in a graph kind of form, it looks kind of cool. There are blogs where that's all it is on different topics. Um, your knowledge. Everyone has some level of expertise in something. I tell people, even if you know how to clean a house and you know how to do that really, really well, or fairly well, or maybe, let's be honest, what if you suck at it? There are people who are looking for that. They want to, listen, people want to connect they either want to know how to do it better, or they want to know they're not the only person who sucks at cleaning houses. There is a woman, um, I forgot her name now, S Sandra, I know her first name is Sandra. Her blog is Messy's Anonymous, and she just started just doing that. She said she used to be a messy, and she learned how to clean her house, and she decided to blog about it, and it became a movement. People started going to her blog, looking it up, and before you know it, she's written books, she's had meetings, and she has messies all over the United States and the world. So you never know. Something that you're struggling with or something you're really good at that someone else is struggling with, you might be the one that changes that. Um, photography blog. This, this little thing, okay, so I'm gonna date myself for those who are younger. I didn't have this. <laughs> and somewhere in my house, I have a box of film. I don't even know if you, you guys know that, that we didn't have like, you know, instant foam, like thousands of pictures in one place. There's no excuse. If you want to do photography, you, all you need is this. You can do a photography blog, just putting pictures together, um, meme blogs, especially for the young folk. There's plenty of cool memes out there, lifestyle. So you see, you get the idea, right? And there are others, uh, travel blog. People are getting paid for travel blogs getting sponsorship for travel blogs. You travel enough and talk about your travels before you know it. Someone, we, um, we follow 
someone online. It's called Follow Me Away Travel. It's a young couple that got together. They mix travel and photography together. He takes beautiful pictures of her, and then they started getting sponsors. People were throwing suitcases. Try my suitcase, try this, and they started sponsoring them. And they did not traditional blogging, but the kind of blogging we'll talk about further down. Um, an adventure blog, curation blog. Curation blog is basically you look online, just like if you've ever been to an Etsy shop, things that you think are lovely, pretty, and you're like a museum curator. You're gonna put all those things in one place, and you can put comments or not. But this is the part I wanna talk about. You can do a podcast. If any of you sat down earlier with um, Michelle Ames, she talked about how to start a podcast. That is kind of a form of blogging. If we use it like lightly, like, uh, loosely, like we did earlier, conversational and about you being your authentic self, podcast is a great way to share your information. But then it's called what's called microblogging. So I went from regular blogging to more microblogging, meaning I moved it over to social media. On social media, I get to be myself, I get to put an image, I get to share, and I just put a little bit, because I don't like to write a lot. I could just make a little blurb about whatever it is that I put up there or write a longer paragraph if I want and share. So Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok, these are all ways to do microblogging um, or a video log. YouTube, um, Vin, Vimeo is the other one? Vimeo is the other? Vimeo. Vimeo, right. So Vimeo, and there's others. And then Reels. Reels are just an even shorter version of those videos. And those are all ways that you can blog, even if you're not a writer. So I wanted to share this from my first one because this was one of my picture story uh, um, blogs. When I started blogging, I did start writing. But this one I shared, now my daughter would die. <laughs> she knew that I had this up there. She's uh, 15 now. But this is what I put on my website. But I did have captions underneath each picture. So in this picture, I say, every morning, Brown and I go outside and we water the garden, right? And then here, and Brown likes to bring out her umbrella so that it feels like the rain is coming down on her. And together, we play in the puddles. And I tell her it's time to go, and she runs away. And I took pictures of her little feet running away. And she goes in the grass to play with the dog. And that was it, that was my whole blog entry. And I, I was like, hey, this is kind of fun. This is long before I was speaking, but I remembered when I did this, that that is so simple, something that any one of us can do, and it doesn't take much time, and it's actually a lot of fun. And without captions, it still tells the story, right? So what are some other options if you don't write? Um, if you're not a writer, writer, I have to write everything. Anyone who knows me knows I carry around with me a notebook everywhere. I have to, because the ideas come and I have to write it down. But these, I have tons of these. So I've learned to use this. So, and I don't know, um, I think in Apple, what's it called? Notes or something? Notes. Huh? Notes. Notes, right, okay. So in Google, it's called Keep. And on the Android, there's an app to download. So I just use uh, Google Keep on my phone. And I'm gonna tell you one of the things I do there. So it says, dictate to your someone else who will type it all for you. If you're lucky enough to know someone like that, go ahead. But I am not. So I just do Keep Notes. And when I say plus, I can hit the little microphone and I can talk into it while I'm, you know, whatever I'm thinking of what I'm gonna write, and it'll write it out for me. And guess what Aida does? She copies, pastes it, edits it, and throws it on the website or wherever it is that I want it to be. And I didn't have to write anything. I just spoke into my phone, let it write it all out, dictation, edit it. Look, instant writer. Um, Guest writers are also another way. So if you have a particular topic and you know other people who may be interested in sharing in that topic or they're related in some way, you can say, hey, would you mind writing on my blog one day? And hey, why not? 
right? So, guest writers, ghost writers. Ghost writers are great because no one knows that it wasn't you, right? <laughs> but, um, as we mentioned, uh, using images and video. But then we have another one. And I'm going to lower this for a second. So you guys can, if you don't already know this beautiful thing, this is AI. And this particular one is on ChatGPT. So you, if you've never been on this website, any of you not been on the ChatGPT website? No, okay, so we're in for a treat here. Um, ChatGPT is the new AI that everyone is talking about. It's gonna take over jobs and stuff that they say, but it's, it could. That's not, not alive necessarily. But what it can do also is, the main thing that most people have a problem with isn't just writing. And, and I want you to come out of the thought that I have to be a great writer to be a great blogger. And that's not necessarily true. What you need is great content. And this thing will help you get great content. So I am really good at what I do when I'm coaching, but it is a lot of work when I have to sit down with someone and they tell me what they want to do, and especially if they're like, you know, I want to launch my business and I want to put it online. So, well, the best thing to do is start making a name for yourself online, which means going on social media. So to come up with content for every single client before was like, that was the thing I hated the most. was Not that I didn't want to do this for my client, but it just took a lot of time and energy. I'm just gonna show you what I did for one of my clients here. I'm using ChatGPT. Okay, I said create 30 days of TikTok content for a female creator who's a gardener and makes her own brand of tea and flavored water. And within five minutes or less, it gave me 30 days of content. And I said, now include that she has, she's 65 and how she stays healthy. And it gave me some more. And now include that she's a dog sitter and she takes care of dogs. And it gave me some more. So I was able to give my clients 60 days of content without writing it for her, without telling her what to put on there but just giving her ideas of what to put out there and it's specific to her. So if you're sitting there and you're thinking, well, I know I wanna do this and I wanna do this and I'm this and I wanna share, but how do I do that? This tool is wonderful. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. You can use this tool to actually write said content, but I don't suggest it. And I'll tell you why. I think that as a creativity coach, creativity begets more creativity. And when we use these tools and we eliminate our own creativity, we eliminate that spark within us, right? So this could trigger that spark within you, but let it do that first. I'm not saying don't ever use it to write content because I, I struggle with writing content of me. So with my bio, when they're like, can you write a bio about yourself? I'm like, no. I can't, but ChatGPT can. <laughs> so I'll just go into ChatGPT and say, uh, write a bio for me that was so, such and such conference. Okay, great. Because <laughs> for me, my brain just, I can do it for you. One, two, three, I'll be like, this is what you need to put. I can see it, but for myself, I struggle. So knowing that, I know that for my clients, they struggle too. So if you feel stuck, then yes, use the AI. It absolutely helps but try your best to trigger within you that thing so that it can trigger more creativity. Because it will, the minute you start doing one thing, you'll go, oh, you know, I can use this like this. Oh, but you know, I can also add this. That's what happens when you start triggering that tr creativity within yourself. So if you're gonna put a blog out there to be more authentic, really push yourself. Use this as what should I do for the next 30 days? And then use that to trigger more creativity within you. But try not to use it to actually write your content for you. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Any questions? Mm -hmm. So, 
Let me say this. <coughs> I'm not like a lot of speakers. I don't like to just sit up here and speak. So I, like I told you, this is a workshop. We're going to have you working. But if you have questions in the middle, I welcome them. Okay? So this is the start of the workshop. Um, so just be yourself, right? So who are you? And I'm not going to make you write the story of me right now. But I am going to ask you for a moment to just write down three topics, three topics that you like to talk about. So if you were sitting and you met me in the coffee shop and you were going, man, I really would like to talk to someone today. What are those top three things? Don't even overthink it. Write three things that you really like talking about. These are your favorite subjects. So now, I want you to write at least two, if not three. What are things that interest you? So maybe it's not something you've had a chance to talk about, or maybe not necessarily something that you would talk about to a stranger, but you find them interesting. Like, you find yourself going online, going down that rabbit hole, and going, I'm really interested in this. Um, with your, so you'd be surprised how many others are interested in the same thing. And I'm gonna share with you later on um, a really interesting person who we have a lot in common. I was like, girl, I didn't know that about you, okay. But she's also a blogger. So just at least two things that you know that you're interested in. And then I want you to think about one thing this one thing that you go, this is an issue I wish we could solve. This is something, man, if I, if I knew a way to solve this, or man, this is something no one ever talks about, but they really should. Write that thing down. What is that thing that if you could share it, something, maybe something you're struggling with, and you know, this is why it's a workshop, you can keep it private and no one's looking on each other's paper. What is that one thing that you're like, man, I really need to talk to someone, or I'd love to, I'd love to know, I don't know if anyone else struggles with that, you know? Write that thing down. And of course, you know, I've gone through these slides over and over, and I'm like, oh, yes, there's an error. You know, and when you're looking for them, you're like, I don't know where it is. See, I'm not a great writer either. <laughs> um, who are you when you're being yourself? So what, it, and you don't have to write that down because that's something you may want to think of more later, but just think about who am I when I'm just being like, so I tell people for me, when I'm around myself, about being myself and being my family, this is definitely a part of it. I'm barefoot. I got my flower dress on. I'm that flower child. I was born that way. I mean, that's just who I am. But I was also born in the hood, right? So. <laughs> When my, when my kids were growing up, they would say to her, I'm like, why is your mom talking like that? And, I, and I've worked with you know, young people. My husband and I teach, and we teach with teenagers and stuff. And my first disclaimer to the kids is like, listen, I was a child of the 80s. I say things like cool and awesome all the time. I was born in the hood, so I say yo and all that other stuff. I'm not trying to be cool, and I'm not trying to keep up. But when I'm relaxed, this is how I talk, okay? So know that up front, so you don't think I'm trying to relate. I'm not trying to relate, I'm just trying to relax. So think of that. Who is that person? Who are you when you're being that person? Okay. So just as important of knowing yourself is who are your people? Who's your tribe? One thing about me is when I was younger, I didn't remember names, but I remembered faces, right? And maybe some of y'all can relate to this. And I got older and couldn't remember faces either. And the more people I've met, and now that my husband and I do things 
around the world, I definitely don't remember faces. Except here. WordPress, WordCamp, this is my tribe. I can tell my husband, we can you go, where did we meet them? And I'll be like, oh, that's such and such. And we met them at uh, WordCamp Buffalo, and this is what they do. And you know, and he's like, how do you remember that? Well, this is my tribe. These are my people. I love this community, and I love everything about it. So for me, it comes like nothing. Everywhere else, I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm so sorry. And I have a really unusual name, so people forget my name all the time. So I'm like, great. You probably don't remember my name, so we can just exchange names now, right? But here is another thing. But who are your people? What do they like to do? So my people like to go to Starbucks. They love Starbucks. Starbucks is going to love me one day. One day they're going to be like, you know, you talk about us all the time. Yes, because my people are in Starbucks. But where are your people? Do they like to go to the park? Do they like to go mountain? You know, you guys have mountains nearby. Do they like to go hiking? Do they love the mountains or do they love the beach? Just think about that. Because when you're thinking about that and you're thinking about who you're talking to, you're going to remember that about your people. So you're not going to write about something that your people wouldn't do. Because you wouldn't do that and your people wouldn't do that. Um, what are their interests? You know, do they like to, whatever, whatever it is that they're interested in doing. Do they like to go shopping? Are they early morning people? Those are not my people, okay? Just tell them that, they're not my people. But I like mornings, mornings are cool, but those early morning people, we were just talking about that this morning. I'm like, who starts the work in at eight o'clock in the morning? <laughs> so, those are not my people, but I was here. Um, what do they do during the day? Where are they? What, what, are they, what keeps them motivated? Because the more you know about those people and you write it down, and, and we're not talking an avatar here, right? Because this is one thing I really am feel very strongly about. While I am a business person, I don't believe in targeting anything, okay? I don't like your target market. We're not targeting people. I tell people, we attract, we don't chase, okay? So we attract people to us, we don't chase them down. We want to attract our tribe to us. We don't want to target them. We want them to say, I'm looking for something, da, 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 and your blog came up. And I'd be like, oh my, that's my people. I love that. Look, she's writing, or he's writing about what I like, and that's so cool. And before you know it, that person's going to tell someone else, and they're going to tell someone else, because they're going to be out doing the thing that you know that they love to do in Starbucks. They're going to be like, Hey, you know what? We're in Starbucks, and I know this blogger that they write about Starbucks. They always, you, they can find you in Starbucks and all this other stuff. And before you know it, they might meet you in the Starbucks one day, right? So that's what you want to know. Because the other thing about the current marketing avatar thing that they do is, you know, have you heard niching, niche down, niche? We're not trying to do that because you, you, in a sense you are, okay? In the sense that you know who you want to talk to. This is basically what you're saying is when I put out these pictures, because remember, we may not be writing, but when I put out these pictures, when I put out this poetry, when I put out what I'm doing, I, it's almost like having a conversation with that person that I would love to have a conversation with, that I would love to be like a friend to. So you want to know who they are. Right? But someone else who may not fit that may not even know that you're a nurse during the day and a vampire cosplayer at night. They may not even know they were interested in something like that until you started writing about it. And before you know it, they're like, hold up, that's a cool blog. And I'm going to share some cool blogs with you. So, what, was, what is it that they would like about your blog? And what are they searching for? Right? So, as those come to your mind, just jot them down. Don't overthink them, because you can cross out anything you want and add to it. But if you don't write it down now, you won't write it down later. I'll tell you that now. So, remember what I said. We do what? We attract, we don't chase. And I put those, a picture of a butterfly, because they say you don't chase butterflies, right? You have to be still and wait for the butterfly to come and sit on your shoulder. 
right? So we don't chase, we attract. So who are you trying to attract to your life? So on the business end, we talked about what a blog can do, right? But this is what really matters to blog. This is for me why I still continue to every once in a while throw something up on my blog. Because <laughs> it's been a long time or do the micro blogging for this reason. Because what can it really do? A blog can inspire other people, right? Like I said, that person who didn't even know that they were interested in the nurse by day and the you know, cosplayer by night but you have other things to talk about beyond that, right? So maybe you have a bit of information they didn't know, they may have come to your blog because they found it intriguing, interesting, but the rest of the information, the meat of what you're sharing, that's the what keeps them there, right? So you can inspire someone. You can be a voice for change. Um, you make people feel good. Uh, this is a true story on my end. Uh, my poetry, I used to put my poetry up and I, and I would do it just regularly, and um, I uh, would write a lot of spiritual type poetry. And I had decided I was gonna stop writing, and I spoke with someone one day, and she was like, hey, are you still writing? You know, I, I go to your blog every once in a while to see your poetry, and I was like, you know, girl, I think I'm gonna lay that down, because I have a lot on play, okay? <laughs> I do a lot of stuff. And she was like, no, no, no. I want you to know on the day that I was feeling really down, I went to your blog, and I started reading your poetry, and your poem changed my life. And it made me reconsider things in myself, and I became a pastor. And I just almost passed out, because I was, it was like, yeah, exactly, I was like, what? She's like, yeah, it just, she's like, I literally read the poem, and got off my seat, and got on my knees, and I changed my life. And I was like, okay, you just said something to me. So I say the same to you. You don't know who it is by just sharing you, just by being who you are, whose life you might change. So I'm gonna share some blogs with you of WordPress bloggers. Okay, this is shameless plug. So this is my honey's blog. <laughs> my husband, William. His blog is My Quest to Teach. He shares us, but I share his not just because he's my honey, but because literally he's not, he's not the person I'm talking to when I say, so you want to, you know, you want to, you know, you're not a writer, you want to start a blog, that's not him. This man is the most prolific writer, blogger I know. He spends all day, all night, every time I look at him, he's like, I'm like, what are you doing, honey? Writing a blog writing a blog and his blogs are not little okay he was writing blogs so if you want to know that kind of blogging that's the man okay so that's his blog but I'm going to share some WordPress blogs now she's also a writer blogger but this is one of those people who change people's lives right so this is Carol Olinger she is actually in um, the German Eiffel and um, if you see here, so WordPress and it has Lipavima. She has Lipavima, and she decided to start writing about this and just sharing her condition. You know, it's, it's a medical condition, and people just started following her. And they had the same condition. Excuse me, and they wanted to know, how are you dealing with it? How are you handling it? What are you doing to help yourself? What are you doing for, you know, life in general? And she kept writing. And before you know it, she became the um, community manager for, no. What's the one with the little purple octopus? I can't remember. But she became a community manager for them. She got involved with WordPress. I happened to meet her because I happened to be her room MC in um, WordCamp Miami. But her life, and her blog inspired me to stay in WordPress and be, I, went, I was like, I was sitting there listening to her going, I want to be like her. So she's my friend now, and if no other reason, she's an inspiration, and you should definitely check out her blog. She's a great lady. This lady here, Aisha Adams. 
Aisha Adams and I met in um, Fort Camp Greenville. Uh, she was a speaker. She had a blog, same thing. Her blog is Nappy Thoughts. Um, she is one of, another one of those prolific. But if you go to her blog, um, her actual website, it's not your traditional blog. So it's a lot more pictures. and But she's more about community, and she asks questions. That's her blogging. Most of her blogging style is you know, asking a question here. And what do you think about this? Asking the community. And what I learned from her is that there's a difference between an audience and a community, right? So an audience is like you're watching a TV or a play. You're not interacting. You're just watching. But a community interacts. You interact with them, and they interact with you. So when you're thinking about blogging, I want you to think about community. Who can I get engaged in what I'm doing so that they give me feedback? And I can talk to them, and I can meet them at the Starbucks one day. She started the blog. I met her in Greenville. She did her talk. The following year, I spoke in Greenville about DEI. I spoke about um, a seat at the table and making WordPress even more inclusive. And according to her, I challenged her to what she's, what is she going to do about DEI? And she opened up an entire institute at Lenore Ryan. And she called me up and said, I want you to be an instructor and teach DEI for the web at the school. So that's how I got that job was through her. And when I was saying earlier that she has some, we, she and I had something in common, is that if you, I don't know if you can see that here, but she likes the cosplay too. So here she is, cat, cat woman. I think that's a Pokemon one. So she was DEI, blogger, cosplayer. I'm like, you're so cool. And she talks about all of that on her blog. April Ware. She's also in WordPress. She's funny. You see her little, <laughs> this is directly her blog. It says Scam Alert, the Dirty Peeper. Scam, scam Alert, the Angry Photographer. And then how you keep on eyes on the prize. And she has others. But she has a wealth of information. She is a prolific blogger, but she's smart about hers, right? So she has a talk. I did not find it on WordPress.tv, but look for her if you ever see her where she shows that if you do many blogs, right? So maybe a small video today. So doing everything I said, a video, a picture, a small blog. At the end of the month, if you just do a bunch of them, you can just make one giant one. So for SEO, that's great if you put it all together as one. But if you just do micro ones and then put it all together as a giant one at the end of the month, that'll bring people to your blog if you're interested in SEO kind of thing. You guys have seen this guy walking around. So he's um, over at Hero Press. But this, I, when I was talking to him the other day, I just threw this in yesterday, when I saw him yesterday. This blog here is quotes from children. So cool quotes that he hears from kids, he just puts them on the blog. And I was like, can I put that on my thing? He was like, sure. So he gave me that, the, um, the web address that he just puts cool quotes from kids. But he also has hallway chats, hero press, for people who WordPress has changed their life. Again, this is mostly video, podcasting type stuff, but it's changing people's lives. He gave us a great story about this. So if you see him, ask him about that, or I, I'll share that too. We know this lady, she was featured on hero press, hallway chats, and this is her, um, her here, uh, oh, Sorry about that. Oh yeah, no, this is the this is to, to get to her talk. Uh, William was also featured on this particular one on the Hero, Hero Press, and so was Carol Olinger. So this one blog site has reached out to all these people, right? So that's a, a good example of how one site or one blogger can change lives. <clears throat> this is that's her, Michelle Ames website. So this is WP Coffee Talk. If you were in her um, podcast uh, talk, she talked about her podcast. This is one of her podcasts. But Michelle by herself has four or five different blogs and podcasts. She's got a lot going on. But she's also changing lives. So I'm going to share with you some of my other favorite blogs. So this is going to be hard for you to see. So this one is called CatalogLiving.net. 
So let me tell you about Catalog Living, and they no longer um, post, but it's worth just going to see, okay? Catalog Living is, you ever go in the catalog and go, what? Why did they put that together like that? Like, that's so weird. So they make fun of that, right? <laughs> So on this side, you can't see, but it's a beautiful brown stone, and on the stairs, are, it's completely filled with gourds, right? And their little caption, and all they do is take a picture of the catalog and put a caption, and that one says, as an, oh, and there's an imaginary um, couple that live in these houses. So the couple is um, Gary and Elaine, okay? So as the fall holidays officially transition to winter ones, Gary and Elaine's gores are ceremoniously shown the door to wait for their lift. That's what that one says. And the one with the boat and all the pillows at the foot of the boat says, um, since we won't be entertaining guests for a while, Gary, I've decided to send our extra cushions out to sea. So that's that caption. And they really kind of, you know, I, my husband tells bad jokes and I think they're funny. Okay, so I think this is very funny. <laughs> This one. Oh, so let me tell you. So um, Catalog Living started off as a web blog, uh, as a blog, and then they went to Instagram and to Twitter, okay? And they stopped posting, I think the last post was in 2017. 10 years of posting. This one is called Post Secret. When I started looking at Post Secret, um, basically what Post Secret is, is people sending postcards of their secrets and they remain anonymous. I started looking at Post Secret about 2010. They are also now on Instagram and Twitter, and he's six books in. And all it is, now this is not for children, this is for adults. There are some that are very innocent, so I put those innocent ones up, but it's people literally sharing their deepest secrets and they're completely anonymous. And he made six, he's in six books now. This one says, saving them also saves me. Is, saving them is also saving me, so it's a cat. And then this one says, oh, it's on a card that says make a wish. I wish making friends was easier as an adult. And it's, that's all it is. He doesn't write anything, he doesn't comment on them, he doesn't do anything except post their secret. That's it. Okay, so this is my confession time. Okay, I'm almost done. So this is my confession time. If I walk by your house and you have your window open, I'm looking in. I am that person, okay? And I'll tell you, that's really come from coming up in Brooklyn. Um, when I lived in Brooklyn, we were surrounded by beautiful brownstones, beautiful homes. You know, I had an okay apartment, but I was always fascinated by what was going on in people's houses. It just looked beautiful, and I just, you know, I didn't have a really beautiful house. So when people left their windows open, I wasn't looking to see what they were doing, or oh, let's see what they have. It was more in my mind, in my imagination, imagining their life. So I would see like libraries with books and all kinds of things. And my favorite was at night when the, you know, the lights would be on and family would be in there, and I'd make up stories. So I found someone else who likes homes too. And it's called hookedonhouses.net. Now she still posts. What she posts are famous homes, realtor, you know, postings that are unusual. So one, I didn't put it up, but there's one that um, they posted where the, the realtor took pictures and had them, it was almost like a selfie in every room. So she was taking a picture of herself in the room. <laughs> and it was just weird. So she posts stuff like that. She'll post um, another, she posted a Victorian house and Every single room in the house had porcelain dolls. Every single one. So it was like either one doll standing in a corner or five dolls just looking at the camera and it was just creepy. But So she'll post stuff like that. But then she'll post stuff like this. Famous houses from TV shows and what they look like on the inside for real. So last year, the last time I did this, I did the full house. And then this year I found that this one if, I love this movie, Cheaper by the Dozen. I loved this house. It turns out Kat, Kat Von D, you know who Kat Von D is? The tattoo artist, she's a tattoo artist. She owns the house and she just put it up for sale. So if you're interested in looking at what that house looks like on the inside, 
it's on who's on houses. So, this is the part where I ask you, what's stopping you? Is it imposter syndrome? Lack of confidence? Choosing a topic? Now you should have some topics in mind. You don't know your why, so why is it that you're not doing it? I want you to think about that, like why, why am I not doing it? Because honestly, it's free. It doesn't cost you anything to start a blog. If you don't want to do a WordPress uh, site, sorry. There are free sites like um, blogger, wordpress.com. Uh, I can just put it up there. And then if nothing happens, and I would just do it just to do it, not necessarily for traction at first, just to kind of get your feet wet. Because once you do it enough, you'll be like, I like this, whether people are looking or not. So like I said, you don't need technical skills. There's plenty of sites that are free and everything's built out for you. So I tell people, if you argue this, this um, quote by Richard Bach, anyone know who he is? I love, he's my, one of my favorite authors. He wrote Jonathan Livingston Siegel. And uh, this one is from Illusions. I forgot what the rest of it is. Something from a reluctant messiah, but um, one of my favorite authors. And he says, argue for your limitations and sure enough, they're yours. So, your turn. This is the last part of your workshop. Um, just list five, five blocks. Just think of the top of your head. Five blogs that you can start right now. Like if I were to start a blog today, I could start a blog on, I don't know, my motorcycle collection. We have a friend who he does video logging of cars that he, not, not cars, he, yeah, cars, cars that he buys and he repairs. And he just says, I bought this car and I did this to it. <laughs> That's it. Doesn't do anything else. He doesn't write about it. He just puts up his camera. He's like, I bought this car. And look, this is what I did. <laughs> and people, and he has following. So just five things, five things that today, if I were to start a blog today, I could do it on that. I sure we could. Five possible blocks. So sometimes you're gonna feel stuck, and even Chat GPT is just not enough. Okay. When you feel stuck. There's some things that you can do. I recommend writing down a hundred, not today, but write down a hundred things that inspire you, make you smile. When you think about it, it makes you happy. I told you one of mine, Starbucks. My husband knows. <laughs> he gives me little Starbucks cards and he's like, here you go. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> But I have other things. I love magazines. Um, my grandchildren, hearing them laugh, makes me smile. Write a hundred things that just Make you happy, that you just like to do, so that when you're feeling stuck, you just go and do it, right? It just, it's gonna release something. Because when we feel stuck, when we feel writer's block, or whatever it may be, is something is overloading our system. And we need to release it, we need to let it go. And the best way to let it go is to find those things that inspire us, right? So taking a walk in nature, that's one of mine. Um, med praying, meditating. Um, Walk where there are people, and just watch people. And remember everything that we talked about, right? Are these my people, is this my tribe? Is there someone here that needs to hear what I'm about to say? And just think about that while you're looking at them. Um, learn about new cultures, because the other thing about us as Americans, we think very American, right? We think, okay, I'm writing a blog and it's only Americans, but you'd be surprised how many people outside of this country are interested in the very same things you're interested in. And we met a young man who started a video log, and his, he was shocked. His people were not from here. He had a huge following in Italy. He said, that's how I grew. And he grew into multi, you know, I don't even know, multi-thousand followers or whatever, but it was, it started in Italy. For whatever reason, they, they latched on to what he was doing, and it blew up from there, and then Americans started following him. Be a tourist in your own city. Look at your city in a new way. Decide you're gonna try new restaurants or go to that park or do whatever in a way that you've never done it before and write about it. I made a decision, I told them, and I don't know when that's gonna happen, 
We have we live in Jacksonville, Florida. We have more parks acre per acre than any other place in any other city in the country. And when I tell you parks, like this could be the park. It's just grass and it has a sign. So I told him, I said, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna take pictures of the parks and say what's good about them and what's not good about them. And just make that a thing. So you can do that with your own state, your own country, the world, travel, and throw, throw a party impromptu with your friends, take a little selfies, laugh. All of that will stir stuff up. It'll make you say, oh, you know what? I'm ready. Now you can go back to your list because you're loose and you got all that off and you can say, you know what? Let's give this a try again. I put down here Pura Vida. We've been to uh, Costa Rica three times because of WordPress. And um, they have that saying, it means pure life. Everything is Pura Vida. How's your family, Pura Vida? And your brother, Pura Vida. How you doing, Pura Vida? That's their thing. And I'm like, I like that. Pura Vida. Everything's Pura Vida. So who's ready to take that leap? Who's going to write a blog now? Oh, I love it. At least one, two, two. OK, I'll take two. OK. So if you decide to start a blog and you want to share with me, I'm at Live Good Life anywhere you go. You can hashtag me or um, at me. I just want a fair warning. If you find the inner writer in you and you write those big paragraphs and I go to your blog and see them, I'm happy. <laughs> so if you do that, break it up into small pieces, make sure you have an image, but I'm just giving you fair warning. But if it's, you know, light and small writing, yes, I would definitely love to look at it. Thank you so much. You can follow me at lovethelife.com. Like I said, at love the life. My husband is myquesttoteach.com, and like I said, this is the most prolific blogger I know. So if you have questions on how to be a prolific blogger, because I'm a do as I say, not as I do person. If you look at my blog, you'll be like, she is not a blogger. I am. And he's also at my quest to teach anywhere you go. Thank you. I'm not talking, literally. Oh, any anything? But I'm doing a video blog and I want to do it on, I want to put it on YouTube yeah. and I want to do it also put it on my site, which is actually the blog. Yes. Do you recommend anything else or would you stay away from YouTube or? Oh, absolutely use YouTube. Do you know that YouTube is the number one search engine in the world? It's not Google, it's YouTube. Would you embed the, YouTube link into the page on the blog, or would you have the actual video embedded in the on the site? I would have the actual video. Give people the option to watch it on your blog, or to go off site. So if they have, if it's there, they can watch it there. But if they like it, so then they'll go. Yeah. Versions well, it, you know, when you put it in there, there is usually a link that you could go to YouTube and then it'll open up YouTube so right. that they can watch it there. Because if they like it, they're gonna go to YouTube. And they'll be like, oh, I don't, I like this. But they may not want to. So people are kind of funny about leaving sites once they're on it. So make sure that they can scroll down Both. and watch more. Yeah. Because everyone knows how, not everyone, let me not say that. Most people know how YouTube works. In order to get more content, they gotta follow and subscribe and do all that other stuff. So they know if I want more, from you, I'm gonna to have to go to YouTube and subscribe. But in the meantime, I'm here, that's me. If I'm on your site and I see you have video, I'll just keep scrolling there and watch it from there. I don't really wanna jump off and, cause then I gotta wait for YouTube to get, I'm telling you, I just don't like all that. So mm -hmm. have it there, but I know if I like your content and I wanna see more, I'm gonna to have to go to YouTube and subscribe from there. So definitely have it. Is there a way to do that from our site? Huh? Is there a way we could do that from our site? Like take maybe emails or, and then send an email blast. Hey, we just posted the, another video. Yeah, you absolutely can. So um, there, you know, there's plugins and stuff. If you do a regular WordPress dot yeah. um, dot org uh, type site, then you know you can have a subscribe to my emails and let people know like a new video is up, so they don't have to subscribe. It's like oh, you can come to the site and there's a new video up. Um, I think MailChimp, if anyone's used MailChimp, there's like an automation that 
will send it out and you can say, let them know there's a new video up and it'll just send it out and people can keep going back to the site if that's what you're trying to do. Um, or, you know, something along those lines. So yeah, you could do it specifically from the site, not from the YouTube, but just don't underestimate YouTube. So I would ask for both, like right. subscribe and do the email so you can have them both ways. And I say that mainly because you don't know who's going to come from YouTube who may want to go to your site, right? Because I don't know about anyone else, but if I like what you're doing, now I'm looking, right? I want more. I'm like, okay, this is cool. What else do they do? Oh, they have a website. I'm, you're going to have your link underneath your YouTube. I'm going to go to the website and see what you've got going on on your website. Because if your YouTube is good, who knows what you got going on over there. So make it... Have you ever, have you ever all have heard of super fans? That's what you want. A super fan is not like a fan. A fan is like, oh, yay, and then they go about their life. A super fan follows you everywhere. Like anything you put out, they're like, yes, more. You know what I mean? And they're like, oh, I'm selling t-shirts now. Yes, I want five. From one for me and everyone in my family. That's a super fan. They're not um, obsessed, but in a sense, they are. They want to know more. And you just don't know who that could be. Right? So you want people who, and you're just being yourself. You're not being anyone else. So it's not like you're going to change up. You're just being you. You're just changing yourself. Yeah, when you, when you start, when you, get, when you develop a following after a while, the more content you create, you'll find that they enjoy your content, but you find that you want to create stuff more that they would like to enjoy as opposed, as opposed to you creating stuff and sharing with them. Right. Mm -hmm. So like if you're a food blogger, it's like, okay, you you like, for example, just example, you like making cupcakes and you do everything around cupcakes, but then one of your followers, you know, asks you, well, do you like pizza? And you're like, yeah, pizza's okay. And I would like to see what you can do with pizza. Yeah. Then you make that transition to doing stuff. Even if you mess up, it's like, this is what I do with pizza. <laughs> yes. And they might like the idea that you mess it up or that you <laughs> do different things with pizza. Yeah. Because, because you're doing something that you enjoy writing about, but then the more followers you get, they're going to want to know like, how to, how you can expand yourself to facilitate them as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he makes an excellent point there. Because once you have people following you and they like what you're doing, they, that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to be like, hey, that's great. Can you do this? Can you do the other thing? Oh, I'd love to see you do this. And guess what? That's content. Like, yes. You, know, you don't have to come up with content. They'll give you content. Yeah, and um, I loved what Michelle said this morning that podcasts are really blogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I never thought of it that way. Yeah, and that's why I didn't. I didn't even know she said that. But yeah, that's why I put it up there because blogs used to be just to write them, but now it's anything. It's just basically you're going to be giving out this information in a way that people can consume it. That's comfortable for them. I do. I'm a reader, but I don't like reading blogs. I like reading my books, but I don't like reading blogs. But there are ways to even turn your blog. It's time. Yes. <laughs> All, right. All right. So thank you guys so much. Thank you. Sorry to like stop everything, but you guys are running over.